This is the Plain English Real Estate Show with your host, Rowena Patton, a show that focuses on the real estate market in terms you can easily understand. Call Rowena now. The number is 240-9962 or 1-800-570-9962. Now here's the English girl in the mountains, the agent that I would trust, Rowena Patton. Good morning, and this is Rowena Patton. I had an early fail there. Where were my headphones? I'm whispering, Randy, Randy. I am so happy today. We are talking about short-term rentals. People are unhappy with them. People who are happy with them. People wondering what the heck is going on. Are they going to be shut down? Hotels that are concerned that it hits their vacancy rates. People who say that it uh, makes rentals much more expensive and it's cutting down on homes that are available for for people to rent out, all kinds of things. And PJ, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm PJ Glenn. I'm a short-term rental investor here in the Western North Carolina area. I own a, a number of short-term rentals just uh, uh, just west of Asheville and uh, also in the long-term rental business as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I want to start off with a quote from Lisa Cameron, who's an Airbnb host. And she says, is this assumption that only rich people are making money off multiple Airbnbs? But it's average people like me that depend on short-term rental income to sustain their lives. Uh, she's an Airbnb host who got hit with a $500 fine. It's not fair and there has to be a, a happy medium, she says. So let's talk about what's going on around the country right now in terms of short-term rentals. And there's a lot of cities out there that are trying to shut it down, basically. Do you know anything about that? Well, we've got places like Wilmington and um, um, e- even here in Asheville where they're, mm-hmm. where they're regulating more and more on the short-term rental world. Um, and, and that's something you need to consider when, when looking at a short-term rental is where, where's, where's the politics in the area at that yes. point? What's, uh, what's the temperature in the room? And uh, b- before, you, before you do make such an investment, you know, know, know kind of what's coming and, and, and what the law is, really, what, yes. what's currently in place and uh, whether or not you, know, you may or may not be grandfathered into that. So mm-hmm. you need to be thinking about those things ahead of time just in case you need just like with any other business, you know, so you can you can pivot and make moves and and uh, and uh, you know kind of regroup and and move in a different direction if you yes. need to. Well, I think the issue as well is that you never know when those laws are going to change, like anything else. You don't, and I think in uh, even here in Buncombe County, you know, this is this kind of it, it's been come brewing for a while, mm-hmm. I think, but in the last uh, the last year or so, it seems to really be really be garnering, garnering some steam and. And uh, I know if, if I, I personally don't have a short-term rental in the Buncombe County area, but if uh, why is that? That reason exactly <laughs> is uh, the, the 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 temperature in the room and the politics of the area didn't. Uh, you know, when I'm Lend looking itself. out five, yeah. ten years, uh, I didn't have a lot of faith that there weren't going to be some some waves there, and yeah. uh, and uh, I just felt better that it was uh, more appropriate for my long-term goals to to invest in other places. Well, and so let's talk about the hotel industry for a minute. So in cities like Asheville, where many, many hotels have come in over the last 10 years, and they're usually the big chains, they have a lot of money and a lot of clout because obviously they're putting in a lot of taxes to the area. I would imagine that's partly why at least. And they can afford to pay very high-priced attorneys to come in and take the case and say, well, this isn't fair, we're building here, we need the local community to do something about it in terms of, offering all these Airbnbs and therefore taking up the vacancy rates. But I want to come back to Lisa for a second, who was saying people assume that it's rich people that make money off Airbnbs. It's kind of the same way thinking that uh, rich people make money from having franchises for McDonald's or something like that, right? Because aren't the vast majority of people that, that invest in Airbnbs, mom and pops as we call them, like small businesses, families who go... Hmm, we've inherited this house, maybe. Let's turn it into an Airbnb. Or we've got a little bit of money. Maybe somebody's passed or they've inherited some money. And what can we do? Maybe we'd like an Airbnb. And I think maybe that comes from, as well, all the boomers who have this dream of retiring and, and running a bed and breakfast. Right. Well, that's certainly true. I think, uh, you know, a lot of times that does happen. A lot of times you know, people get into this, they've inherited a property. And um, and the first thought is, hey, we see all this, uh, we saw this uh, – all this action going on with with Airbnbs, and well, you know, let's just make an Airbnb. And I don't necessarily think every house is correct for an Airbnb. 
Um, most of my properties are, are in, in more remote areas with distance between me and the next neighbor. Um, but, uh, well, but why yeah. do you mention that? Because neighbors get upset sometimes when they sometimes have, yeah. neighbors get upset, yeah. um, and, especially and, in neighborhoods. In neighborhoods, you know, again, <laughs> you know, you, you, before you make before you sign on that dotted line, you really need to read uh, read the neighborhood, read yes. read the room, and and see if this is an appropriate place. Just because it's legal, and just because there's no at, at that moment no no, uh, no law saying or, no restrictions yeah. saying that you can't do it doesn't mean the headaches won't be coming down the road. Yes. And you need to you need to kind of weigh out the options. Is this, if is this investment better, possibly for a long term rental, or would a short term rental be appropriate here? And most of the time, you can do the thirty day rentals even in neighborhoods. It's, it's very hard to restrict that. So. And even in the city, you can do 30-day rentals because they're not short-term rentals because they're 30 days. And you've got things like traveling nurses and the demand for longer-term rentals has really gone up as people are moving now. We've gone post-COVID. Are we still saying that anymore? Oh, my gosh. We've gone post-COVID where people are, are, are moving about in the country now. So they move to another state and they don't necessarily want to buy a home right away. They want to live in a home. I mean, you can't buy a home here in in four weeks. It's not even possible. So you'd want maybe 90 days or something like that, which isn't a short-term rental, correct? So That's correct. Um, and and I you think can charge a bit more for that. You can charge a bit more for that. You know, we, we call them the furnished finders in the industry. Uh, but we're seeing that as a lot of people want to move in here to the area. Uh, as you very well know, you can't just jump on a property. It's yeah. very competitive. It's yeah. a it's a, a multi-bid situation. So if someone wants to get here, they need maybe they need to rent for a little bit. Maybe they need that three six month lease, and um, and maybe that's appropriate for them to be in the area to be able to be more on top of uh, yes. uh, purchasing a home in this area. So there there is a demand for that as well, and that's uh, that's certainly something we've seen in this area. And you've got the issue too that. Uh, you know, the natives anywhere, this is in Asheville, it's anywhere. We have listeners all over the country. Thank you guys for listening today. You know, a lot of the natives anywhere in any city anywhere say, we don't want these new people moving here. Well, Asheville and the surrounding area is absolutely beautiful. If you've uh, if you've ever taken a road trip out west, and, and, and it certainly has its beauty and its charm too, but when you come back through the mountains, you're, you're, you're happy to be home. Yes. And, and many people... Uh, you know, they drive through and they, they remember us and, and they know that this is a beautiful place and they want to move here. And, and that's just we're, we're blessed to live in a beautiful place. Uh, but uh, a lot of people want to be here and supply and demand. Yes. Uh, creates a situation where of the course. prices are much higher. And that's always going to be the case when when people want to move to a place because of its natural beauty. And absolutely. Unfortunately, regardless of what you think about it. You can either be the person that is unwelcoming or be the person that's welcoming. And the interesting thing, too, is, and Randy, you're a native, you've probably found this, too, is that many of the people who are complaining actually moved here from somewhere else. (laughs) Very true. (laughs) Isn't that right? I mean, oh, my goodness. So, yeah, so you've got natives who are like, "Don't, don't move here and therefore don't be in the Airbnb. Then you've got people who have Airbnbs who are very happy, usually, to offer those longer term leases, obviously it's less money generally than a short term lease because those are the, the premium price. Um, but it's more money than doing a six month or a or a year's lease generally. So there's a big opportunity there as well, obviously. Correct. So um, I wonder what portion of people everywhere that are moving somewhere because we've all become so transient. You know, maybe moving to be nearer the kids. The vast majority, it's something, it's, it's a very high percentage. I won't quote the number because I, I might get it wrong. But the vast percentage of, of asset money in homes is still with the baby boomers. And baby boomer is 58 and up or 59 and up, depending on where you draw that line. So you've got people, you know, people who are entering their 60s right now, or next year it will be 60, and they're thinking about, um, long-term care. They're thinking about, you know, getting insurance for that. They're thinking about moving into retirement community, communities. They're thinking about finally at 59 downsizing from their five-bedroom, four-bedroom houses that the kids grew up in. And now those kids are in their thirties and they've got their own families and they probably live somewhere else. So you've got this massive, I mean, some, some economists are saying it will be a tsunami starting next year of boomers moving out of their homes and selling their homes 
And that, I think, will create a whole uh, inven- inventory out there. I mean, real estate changes in demographics are usually a trickle, not a tsunami, and it's probably going to be somewhere in between because the large number of boomers there. But you wonder how many of them will be interested, especially the younger ones in their early 60s, of thinking about Airbnb and investing that money and what all that additional inventory that's coming on the market will do. Because that inventory is generally going to be for younger people who have those families that want that four or five bedroom home, you know? That's true. And and, and one thing I think about is, um, you know, sometimes bigger is not always better. Um, my, my to this day, I, I've owned several properties. Uh, I've owned beach property, lake property, mountain property. Um, still to this day, the number one uh, bottom line income producing property that I own is a one bedroom, nine hundred and sixty two square foot little wow. cabin on the side of a mountain with a hot tub. And we, we always jokingly say because it, it always pays the bills. It's always been number one. So wow, um, we're, we're a larger property, uh, you know, still has higher higher utility costs, higher expenses, um, and a higher cleaning fee at that. So it doesn't necessarily always produce the the revenue that you think it's going to produce. Mm-hmm. So I would caution someone, you know, okay, we inherited mom and dad's house or you know, grandmother's house, and. You know, it's so big. We're gonna make tons of money. Well, I, you you need, really need to think that through first. But bigger is not always better. And this is Rowena Patton and PJ on the Real Estate News Radio Show today. If you have any questions about short-term rentals, give us a call eight two eight two four zero ninety nine sixty two eight two eight two four zero ninety nine sixty two. If you're calling in from Mars, you can use the eight hundred number five seventy ninety nine sixty two eight hundred five seventy. 9962 if you've got any questions about short-term rentals or real estate or what's happening in the market we're here to help and uh, would love to help you with that so it's uh, it's it's a really fascinating industry i think that's absolutely um blossomed grown at an incredible rate as people know and i guess as as it's blossomed and uh, a lot of mom and pops and a lot of investment companies are buying properties to short-term rental or maybe it's a second home as well we'll talk about second homes in a minute then a lot of uh, people who are supporting those rentals pop up let's talk about that a little bit so cleaners for example how important are cleaners when you can have a short-term rental well cleaners are everything those those are the backbone those are the people that are really going to hold things together we're, we're truly blessed with a great crew um you know you want to find somebody that's dependable you yes. want to find somebody that will answer their phone that Gosh. that uh you know, you know. There's a lot of questions you need to ask. You know, you go through, walk through the house, open up drawers, look at stuff, and and there's going to be incidentals. There's going to be things that that get missed, and you know, you want to have someone that that you can depend on to call and say, "Hey, we've got this issue. Can you take care yes. of it?" Um, I've been through a lot of cleaners, and it took a long time to find the right ones. And we, you know, right now, um, we we have the best. And, and they, they support us. They understand the business we're in. And, and that's the thing. You, you always just want to talk to that person, have a conversation with that person. It's not cut and dry. It's not someone that just simply perform, performs a service. And, right. And, 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 but it's a relationship. And, right. And, and that's what we have, we have gotten in our business is that relationship. And the same goes with a lot of things where I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very blessed that I've been able to acquire a lot of, a lot of, uh, minor skills and i can do the simple repairs the plumbing the electrical simple wall repairs but if you can't do that if that's something that you're not comfortable with you need a a good maintenance person a good handyman and and having that person who's willing you know it's it's eight o'clock at night and and something's not working and can you go out and take care of leaking something's leaking very something critical right Uh, having that person on standby it's very critical so you know that's another thing to think about when when getting into this business is how involved can i be how involved do i want to be and do i have a network of people that can support where where i can't yes so and if you can't you can have a management company to that and i do want to direct everybody to str short-term rental str CPO. We're building a big national list of resources for people who are interested in short-term rentals, people who support short-term rentals. So 
If you are a cleaner or management company or anybody that's interested in short-term rentals, whether it's buying it, getting funding for it, maybe you offer funding to short-term rentals, go ahead and go to STRCPO, that's Certified Pre-Owned, STRCPO.com. There's a link on there to enter your details and we'll share them out anywhere in the country. You know, we're at the start of building the list. It'll take us a little while, but eventually we're going to have a gorgeous map there where you can go on and find someone to call to help you. So, And if you're a newbie getting into the short-term rental market, then you want to think about what do I need to know, you know, and maybe you're thinking, oh, I can just maintain it myself and, you know, I've got, I can go in and clean it myself or something like that. Uh, get a quote. You know, we'll, we'll have a list of people for you to get a quote from on that. But I really want to support the cleaners, you know, those people that really specialize in STRs so they know what to do. Because like you said, it's not like cleaning somebody's home. When you clean somebody's regular home, you're not normally going through their drawers. But give me some other examples of that. Let's get down to nitty gritty on there. If you're a cleaner, what do you expect them to do in a short term rental? I expect every door to be opened, every drawer to be opened. Um, I, I've personally never had this happen. But uh, yeah, I, I've read stories about where, where a guest might have left their firearm in a drawer somewhere. Ooh. And, and the cleaner didn't open up a, a side drawer when, when doing the cleaning. And, and then lo and behold, you know, the next guest comes in, goes oh to put their gosh. keys in the side drawer, and then there's a firearm in the, in the side uh, in the side. Imagine drawer. if a child stayed exactly, in Exactly, exactly. So that's something we go over with our cleaners is, you know, wow. open up every, every side, side table to every be, in every bedroom. You know, the, uh, the Chester drawers, the, uh, the end tables, open those up. And j for nothing, for another reason, just make sure that a drink hasn't been spilt in there to make sure no belongings have been left yes. behind. You know, maybe we can perform a service to our guests. Maybe they put a diamond necklace in that drawer. We can catch that before, um, before it gets lost. I'll go catch those for you. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's, that, that's important. But, uh, you know, looking inside microwaves and ovens and behind, b behind things in cabinets, uh, it's, things that can catch things, things on shelves. Um, uh, oh, one of my big things is I ask my cleaners to do, if I have a reclining couch, is to make sure you open up the recliner Ooh, because there's the little fold things there. Things falls down, the yeah, little fold. Th things fall down there, but also the, there's a little fold there on the uh, on the footrest that tends to get a little debris, and I want that cleaned out. I, yes. I, I, you know, we want to have a high standard. and. Um, you know, just, just pulling things out and, you know, and just doing regular you know, deep cleaning all the time, uh, pulling, pulling furniture out, vacuuming behind there. Um, and, and overall, you know, that's, that's, that's you know, kind of what we, what we look, look for, um, look for from our cleaners. I'll tell you a funny story. I once stayed in an Airbnb at the beach and, um, hmm, the, I used the stove. I was I, heating up some muffins in the morning or something. I don't know. And, you know, the little plastic fascia that goes across the front with the clock in and the dials and all of right, that. Right, right. The cockroach is running underneath mm. that. Well, the uh, the beach is its own special thing. We 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 have owned <laughs> beach properties in the past. And uh, I always told new new beach property owners, I said, you know, you need, when you're looking for your pest control, you need to go to your next door neighbor and ask who their pest control is. Yes. Because you want your pest control done at the same time they get their pest control done. That way you're not chasing each other's bugs across the street. Oh, oh my gosh. Genius. <laughs> That's a really good point. That's what we did. Oh so my gosh. We, we, we had three houses in Myrtle Beach, and what we did was we would just get with the neighbors, and we would all have one one whole section of the block pest control done at one time. And, and, that, was, and, and that proved very effective. When I first moved here to D.C., Washington, D.C., I lived in an apartment building, and it was an older apartment building. And I wondered why there was um, steel wall down behind the cabinets. That's a little trick, apparently, to stop the cockroaches coming out. So I didn't know that. So I went out one night, and I used lots of bug spray because I kept seeing cockroaches. I'm like, I'm going to pull all that out. I'm going to really deep bug spray the entire apartment. And I swear to you, I came home and the countertops were covered. You couldn't see the countertops with dead cockroaches. The pest wow. control works. and, and, and that's Except something... I sent them next door is the problem. And that's why they put the steel wall in so they can't travel so through they the can't walls. Travel where back they... in. Yeah, into mm -hmm. the apartment next door. So if you've got a condo building, that's definitely something to think about. You know, where I, I do, just 
triggered that memory because you said you don't want to be chasing the pests next door. And I'm sure right. that's what happens. Yes, you it know, does you happen. Get more pests next door. Right, Ooh. right. And and, and we we have a, a fantastic pest control uh, system at, at our properties. You know, we we have the best in the business and, and get quarterly uh, quarterly uh, sprayings. Yeah. Um, and and you need that. You know, you don't. don't and that's a, that's another thing to consider when running a short term rental. Is is these maintenance costs that you wouldn't normally think of and pest control. Yes. You know, don't don't uh, don't uh, don't undercapitalize your pest control. Don't always necessarily look for the the less expensive guy. Make sure you get the right guy because one one bad review can cost you uh, can cost you hundreds of dollars that you may never even see. Yeah, and or even more, I'm sure. Or even more because you want to keep those stars high, right? Absolutely. Whichever one you're on. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have a download sheet for you. I think PJ and I can put one together quite easily. So that you can look at this. It's not there yet, but you can go to strcpo.com for all those resources. There is a link there so that if you are a pest control company, and please share this with anybody you know who's a great pest control company, wherever you're listening, that you know works with STRs or they're just a great pest control company. Same thing with cleaners. Do you have a great cleaner? If you've got an STR or a regular house that you know could do a great job in an STR, help them with their business. Everybody needs some help with their business right now. Maintenance people, handymen, plumbers that, you know, are trying to build their business. Maybe they've left a big plumbing company or a big electrical company and they're building their business on their own. Or they're a general contractor or a handy person. If you know anybody that does that or you are that person, go ahead and click on that link at strcpo.com. And enter the details there, and we will share your details out with people who are looking. And you can always say no, but it's a, just a great source of business for you. It's all free. We're never going to charge you for it. So, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's well worth looking at. Maybe we'll charge for it in the future. I don't know. But it won't be charged for quite a while, and a lot of people will get your names and phone number and business and everything else. Did I miss anybody in that list there of people you'd be thinking about that are supporting a short-term rental? You know, I, I, I think uh, – w- one thing, especially here in the mountains, and, and I know this is true over in the Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area, is if you have a hot tub, you need a hot tub maintenance guy. Ooh. You need somebody that is that is uh, yes. on the other end of their phone and can help you because a hot tub can make or break somebody's vacation. So You're I right. Would... If they want a hot I mean, they're choosing a home that has a hot tub. They've checked that box. Right. And then they get there and it's not warm and it's the middle of the winter because it's just lovely being in, in a hot tub in the middle of the winter. I've been in one in snow. It's just so delightful. And then it's not warm. Like you've got a bad re- review coming there and it spoils somebody's vacation. Absolutely. HVAC too, I'm sure. Oh, the same thing. And, and one thing I, I would encourage people to do is don't wait until the problem shows up. Yes. You know, get those numbers ahead of time. Have yes. somebody ready to go. Get those relationships built ahead of time. Um, don't don't wait for that HVAC issue to come around. Have have regular maintenance on that HVAC, but also be 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 with a company that will come out at ten o'clock at night. Uh, I had a good friend Ouch. of mine the other day. Just the same thing happened. Um, he uh, had a guest come into his house, and at ten o'clock at night, his HVAC was not working. Oh. He had a bad control board. Uh, we were we were able to get him with somebody that could get out to him within hours, but um, he he lived out of town. He didn't have that network, and um, you know it, it created a situation. But but we got through it, and just through networking and knowing some knowing, uh, knowing who the right we could re- knowing the yeah. right people and who we could rely on, we got yeah. him taken care of. But that's important. You know, again, back to hot tub. Have that hot tub guy ahead of time. Um, have, have the cleaning crew, the maintenance people. Those are people you want to have relationships before something happens. Yes. Uh, just, just, just call and say, "Hey, I've got this house." You know, and and give them a little bit of business. Let, you know, call that person just to just to build that that relationship and that rapport ahead of time. Yes. If that's something you're not comfortable with doing. Absolutely, and I can tell you, we you know we're at about thirty six hundred transactions at All Star Powerhouse brokered by EXP here in the mountains. I will also use that list to recommend you to our clients. You know, that's a big client database. We've got about sixty thousand people that have registered over the years that you know are thinking about moving to the mountains and they want to look at properties. We've got all of those people too. So go ahead and enter your details if you want some more business at strcpo.com. Um, it is a new site, so 
we're building it over time and we're going to build this short-term rental community because it is all about knowing the right people and it, it isn't something for the faint of heart is it where you're just going to jump into it no that that's true um you know if you're considering if you have a piece of property and you're deb- debating between short term and long term you really want to think about where, where your commitment level is are you looking for just passive income or, or do you want to make this a daily chore yes and um you know if, if you have one that's one thing but it's it's not going to be enough to to have a full a full time income off of um and a lot of people don't don't think that they they think you throw it up there and it's instantly going to make make you forty fifty sixty thousand dollars a year and, and that's just not how it works yeah. um, so you really need to start thinking you know what are you wanting to put into this what what is your level of commitment and then and then I always say that two is that number that you know you're really starting to rethink things you know I, I'm in the same thing same thing with franchises you know a lot of people have been in the franchise business know and you that have too haven't I you? have too I've been a franchisee that. of a of a large restaurant chain and and I know that the number two was the one where you're like wow I've really got to grow because this is a lot harder than number one but it'll be easier at number three and yeah. so at number two, you're, you're working a lot more. But if you're still working a full-time job at this point, you're working a whole lot. You're, yeah. you're working your full-time job. What if you have a management company? What are you paying the management company if you, you have know, a management company? Management comp- I, I personally manage all my own stuff. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, I've heard management companies, you know, everything from 10 to 25%. It just yes. depends on the level of service that they're providing. Uh, I would, you know, I think on the lower end, you know, they're just they're just servicing your listing and providing uh, providing the reservation. Uh, you're still managing cleanings. You're still managing maintenance and, and upkeep and purchasing of uh, durable goods inside the house. Uh, and, and then, of course, that number goes higher. You know, you up to the 20, 25 percent. That that's going to be a complete hands off type of experience. Yeah. Um, Wouldn't you recommend that, though, for somebody that just wants one, at least to get started? It, it might be a good idea for some. Um, if you really want to be hands-on, you really want to dig into this, you know, yeah. just just educate yourself. It's it's not the hardest thing in the world, but just be prepared for the unknowns. You know, try to try to, try to figure out what you don't know yeah. and, and just educate yourself. And you can go on the forums out there. There's Facebook pages everywhere. and you can, But you got to be careful there, too, because they'll scare you to death. Um, there, they don't a, want competition sometimes, right? Well, that's true. That's true. You, you really, you know, you'll you'll get some of the uh, you'll get some of the nightmare stories, and, and some things you'll look at and you'll say, "Well, that's easy to solve. I know how to solve that." And and usually the answer is just take care of your guests, just do yeah. the right thing, and and if you can just keep that in mind. Um, I also tell somebody people another thing, you know, and I think this is one of the most important things that you can really. Keep in mind what you're doing. You know, mm-hmm. it, it it it's it's not your house; it's your business. Um, don't yeah. don't take it personally. It's a business. Yeah. You know, if you uh, if you own a pizza place and you know the front counter gets damaged by a kid who throws a toy into it or something, that's just part of business. Um, don't 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 be that person that uh, well my my table had a minor scratch on it. I'm going to file a claim with Airbnb. That that's you're you're getting into the weeds. Just yeah. just just fix it. And move along. Don't don't stress yourself out with those. If 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 you're getting stressed out over that, you're going to be getting you're going to put a lot on your plate very quickly. Where that, those efforts could be spent in other places. So just just remember, it's your business. Yeah. It's not your home. Well, sometimes it is your home too. So I had one in Black Mountain when I lived there, and um, I'd, I'd taken on a, a, my husband had moved out and. I'd taken on the big mortgage all alone, and I put a door at the top of the stairs. It was in a beautiful little neighborhood that allowed uh, short-term rentals, and I met some lovely families and couples and individuals that were coming to the area. Um, It was a really nice little Airbnb downstairs. It really didn't bother me at all. I never really saw anybody, but that was in my home. So it was actually very easy to run down and change the bed, and the laundry was downstairs too, and... It, the only way it put me out, really, is that the laundry was downstairs, so I couldn't do laundry when somebody was staying. Right, right. But as you know, many people stay at the weekend. You know, they're not staying during the week, or they might go home Monday or Tuesday or something. So, you know, that's, that wasn't putting me out too much. But one interesting thing I learned through that is that – I can tell you a funny story about the, the dog, too. Um, one thing I really learned from that is that year two is when it starts happening – Because people start rebooking because they've had a nice experience. And now you've got a bedrock of clients. And it's like anything else. You know, if you're a nail salon, people come back when you've had a nice experience. So 
from the launch, it might not be, you know, crazy and wonderful, but it takes a while. If you've got a hair salon, same thing. Or, um, you know, if you go to a car dealership and they serve you so well, you might, I know I stayed with a certain brand of car because the service was so amazing. I mean, they'd come and pick me up and it was amazing. It was just incredible. Um, and then the guy left and then I went to a different brand, literally, because the service meant everything to me. So you've really got to think about it, I think, as yes, you might not make money overnight, but year two, you know, if you give that great experience. What do you think to that? that that's absolutely true. We have we have many repeat renters over the years. Um they, they, they come back time after time, and, and it's almost, you know, once or twice a month I'll get a message from somebody that says, hey, you know, my, my friend Bob stayed at your place. He highly recommended it. I wanted That's to reach lovely. out to you. So, you know, you'll build up the referral, and that just keeps it, – it's, it's the snowball effect. Yes. And then you can just come to a point where, you know, a lot of people start asking, like, well, are you booked every weekend? I said, well, yeah, I'm booked every weekend. I'm booked, you know, 28 out of 30 days a month. And, and a lot wow. of that is, is referrals, and it, it is – it is repeats and people come back and, they, and we have families now at this point that have made traditions. They, they spend the same, um, you know, three day weekend every January or every February at, at our, one of our, one of our properties. So, and, and so that momentum builds, uh, and the same thing, uh, you know, we look down at, one of our, at our lake house, uh, people come down for football games. They, they come down to spend time on the water and, and that's tradition. That's, Which that's lake is it? Lake Hartwell. Okay. So they, 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 they've made it a family tradition at this point, and so we're seeing those people come back time and time again. So And, and that's, that's, that's very rewarding that we were able to take care of that person and, uh, and earn their business a second, third, fourth time. What do families stay, say about staying in any of your rentals as opposed to getting a hotel room and traveling somewhere? Well, the advantage to having a short, or being in an Airbnb or a short-term rental is you have you have the whole space. Uh, well, at least at our properties, you have the whole space. Um, you tip, typically have got a, a yard or a, a, a big patch of forest behind you or uh, just a big deck to hang out on. Where in a hotel room, you've got 400, 450 square feet to pack everybody into uh, and no kitchen. Yeah. Um, you know, one of our properties is a two-story property with the uh, with a big living room downstairs, and 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 I when I when I designed it, I didn't really think about it, but uh, I, we get a lot of feedback that, that was the greatest place to send the teenagers. They would go play video games on the on the on the big screen, and the adults would stay up up upstairs on the deck, uh, hanging out and grilling or cooking and just uh, spending fellowship with each other. And I never really thought of it that way, but it was a it was a separate space, and you don't get that with hotel rooms. Right, right, and a family gathering place instead of gathering in the lobby downstairs or gathering in the hotel restaurant, right, or something, you know, or having to go out in the city and spend a whole lot of money. So you probably save a lot of money like that as well. Go to the grocery store before you go. We need a download sheet on what you need. Oh, sure, <laughs> and, and and that's you know one of the biggest questions we get is where's the closest grocery store? I bet, and and so that's what we've included in our, our check-in guide is where is the closest grocery store? And we usually list the top three, uh, whether that be Ingalls or Publix or, or whatever else is nearby. But that, uh, and you know, you, and you learn that going into this business, you know, questions that repeatedly get answered. And, and you know, if those questions are asked multiple times, you know, we'll put that in your guide and it will make your, make your world a little easier yes. just to go ahead and be preemptive and taking care of that guest and getting in, getting them the information uh, ahead of time so they can plan maybe they want to pick up groceries on their way in yeah um, maybe they you know they're coming to the mountains and i had a family that they always ask is it is there going to be snow I said, well this is western north carolina it could be <laughs> 75 degrees one day and and six inches of snow the next yeah so um isn't that the truth <laughs> yeah so but they they want to pick up groceries and they um and, and typically they i've had people just say you know we they, they wanted to get snowed in and just hang out in a cabin and sit in front of a wood stove fire and 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 spend time with their family. That sounds so um, delightful. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! And in the summer too, I bet. Uh, in the summertime, you know, they 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 want to spread out a little more. You know, the the hot tub's not necessarily the most popular thing, but uh, sitting out on the deck and grilling and uh, you know uh, kids running through the woods where they maybe they're from a a city area or urban area where they don't get a lot of exposure to the forest. So. And in our particular properties, we're surrounded by uh, forest and, and all of them. And so they, they do get that true mountain experience. Wow. 
So let's talk about Airbnb, VRBO. Those are the two biggest sites where people advertise. Are there others? Where do you put yours? And, and do you know any differences between the two? So so we're listed on several different sites, Airbnb and VRBO being the, the top two, of course. Um, Airbnb, I mean, we, we, we all know Airbnb. It's, it's very... Um, uh, very diverse you know, is where you can get a room in someone's house all the way up to an entire space in a five six thousand square foot home. Um, uh, VRBO, uh, especially right now, has been pushing a, a marketing campaign of where you do get only the whole, whole space. the whole space, yeah. and a lot of people like that. I've 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 spoke with guests in the past, and 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 that's what they want. They they're they're looking for privacy. They're mm-hmm. looking they they don't want to be supervised. They don't want to be um, looked over, uh, and, and and I get that you're on vacation. You don't yeah. you know you know you don't want to be you don't want your your vacation micromanaged to a certain extent. Um, and but one we're seeing a lot more traffic on is Booking dot com, and um, you know, not not necessarily the easiest website to navigate, but we are seeing more and more traction on that. And, and I'm, I don't really know why. Maybe it's uh, their marketing uh, strategy, but we, we are seeing some increased bookings there. I would think that's probably because they have hotels as well. Probably and so. And you can get yeah. the car. And, right. you know, it's like a normal, normal, regular right. hotel booking site. But they're throwing the Airbnbs, VRBOs on there as well. Right, right. And we see, you know, we've seen different properties do better on different sites. Yeah. Uh, for instance, our lake property does better on VRBO for oh. some reason. I don't really know why. Uh, it just does. And uh, uh, when we had uh, property down in Myrtle Beach, it, it did better with VRBO than it did with Airbnb. Uh-huh. Um, no real rhyme or reason to it. It just was, you know, is what it was. Um, but, but you know, you want to be everywhere. And very important. This is one of those things, if, if you just, just, you know, take the headache off the plate to start with, is make sure your calendars are synced. Oh. There is nothing worse than a Been double there. booking. Yes. And, and, and you know, it, it's not hard to do, but just be redundant on that go back through your calendar make sure you're you know you're going through 30 60 days um just double check your calendar to make sure that the sync did work and you don't have a double booking somewhere because that that can that can spell trouble oh and airbnb and vrbo now offer that facility right where they you do, can they sync do. those calendars thank goodness i know that when i started i either didn't know about it or they weren't offering it at the time and that just made it a huge pain and they do that on purpose it's kind of like an apple phone and an iPhone and they an do. Android phone. You know, the Apple keeps everybody out. Right. And and before, you know, we, we operate a uh, an RV rental business as well. And oh. and, and between the, uh, the 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 big sites, the outdoorsy, the, uh, the RV share, there there was uh, there was issues with their uh, calendar syncing. And we oh. had we ended up with double booking several oh. times. And I think they've got that mostly worked out at this point. But that is that is it can be very costly. It can very be very time consuming. Um, and people get very ticked off. People get, I remember because that. you've made your plans. Yes. You know, you're, this is your vacation. You want to make your plans be done and, and be reliable. Um, and, and especially and, around the holidays, there might not be anything else available. Exactly, exactly. Those peak times, uh, Christmas, uh, July 4th, Memorial Day, Labor Day, you know, you, you, you've made your plans. And at the last minute, if there's a mistake, then finding an alternative uh, accommodation is, is going to be it's going to be hard. Yeah, but really hard. And then what about let's talk about pets for a minute. What do you think about pets and Airbnbs? Well, we we are pet friendly, and and okay. so I I I tell people, you know, carpet is your enemy. Yes. Do not have carpet in your Airbnb, um, either hardwood floors or LVT or plank. Um, make it easier. I, I most of my houses all have life proof flooring in them from yes. from Home Depot. Yes. I love that stuff. It's easy too. to clean. It, it 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 you can't destroy it. We we put it in in a couple of beach houses, and if they can survive the beach, it can survive anything. Yeah. Um, but but it makes it easier on the cleaners. And when it comes to to pets and and accidents, and accidents do happen. You you've got a pet that's not in their normal environment, so they get nervous. But you know, as a mark as a market example, you know, you I, I a lot of people don't want pets for some reason, and. I, th- I think you're singling out a huge part of the market by by saying no pets allowed. So to me, that's really important. Yeah. To, you know, because families like traveling with with their pets. That's it's part of their family. And it's one of the reasons you don't go to a hotel. And it's another reason you don't go to a hotel. Don't take pets. Some right, do, but right. most don't. And the carpet normally is not pleasant when there's been a pet in, exactly. there, in the hotel room. So exactly. I love 
I just want to talk about LVP just for a second because mm-hmm. I love LVP. If you're thinking about putting it in your home or a short-term rental or whatever it is, I want you to make sure that you pay a little bit more money. It, it's about a third more, actually. It's about another dollar a square foot in general for the full vinyl. Yes. Don't go for the layered vinyl over the top of the wood. And here's why. If somebody has an accident, your doggy pees on it, or the kid knocks over a glass, or whatever it is, uh, a lot of them will have a uh, 24-hour certification on them. The problem is you might not see that glass of water behind the couch or the dog pee behind the couch or whatever it is. And water and uh, mixed wood does not mix very well. It blows. And the very worst thing is if you can't then, it's not easy to replace those planks in place. It's possible, but normally uh, luxury vinyl planks of uh, LVP, as they call it, has come such a long way. There's, you go into Lowe's or Home Depot, you've got 30 plus colors to choose from. Um, I did it only three years ago, and there were six colors to choose from. The The market has absolutely exploded because everybody looks Absolutely, it, loves and there's it. some great brands out there. We oh love gosh. the Life Proof. We love yes. the Stain Master. Yes. Um, and it looks like real wood. And it looks I mean, like some real of them wood, really yeah, look it, like it, real it wipes wood. off like a countertop. And exactly. It's great stuff. But, you know, going back to your point, you know, using those other uh, more inexpensive products that have MDF or, or other materials in them, they're really not it. worth it. And that goes back to, you know, getting into short-term rentals is, is do you have enough capital to do this right? Do yes. you have, are you, are you well, are you properly capitalized uh, to, to properly stage your Airbnb? Yes. And, and, and it's not inexpensive to remove all that carpet. So I know that, so I can get, I can quote you on what it cost me to do my about 1400 square feet. I had everything ripped out. It had old hardwood flooring in places it had you know over the years this is a mid-60s house it had marble floors that were all cracked somewhere else that you know bob the dad put down i'm sure at some point sorry bob Um, his name wasn't really bob but you know it was all cracked because he he, was just a handyman special where his daughter said hey can you help me out with this the floor doesn't look good it had old vinyl or something and you know it it was all mixed floors had it all ripped out it was such a mess and lvp put down everywhere including on the concrete downstairs. That's the other thing about LVP. If you consider it in your home, you can put it in a basement. You still want to put the vapor barrier between. Absolutely. Um, however, you can put it straight down, unlike hardwood in a basement. Right. So it's a great thing to do there. And I think it cost me about $14,000, which was a big investment. But, oh, my gosh, these floors are wonderful. The house has now been rented out for two years, and I don't have to worry about it, you know. So LVP is a, a, a is definitely a yeah it's definitely a great product and yeah. and it it will if you get the quality stuff it'll last for a long time and you will you will be happy years down the road uh, that you did that and get the wide plank too get the assorted you want to make sure that it's got at least six different planks in the patterns because that makes it look more like wood it makes Very it true. look more natural. And get the assorted widths as well. So if you ever go into a, and that doesn't cost very much more at all, I might add ten percent to it, but it's worth it. If you ever go into a high end luxury home, you'll always notice that they use wide planks and mm-hmm. assorted planks and assorted colours, uh, generally. So you know, have it emulate that, and it's still a lot cheaper than hardwood, and it's definitely easier to maintain. Very true. And I think a lot of families are choosing that too. You see it in a lot of luxury homes now. You do, you do. And um, you know, I, I have a dislike for carpet. Like I said, it, it's Me just too. you know you, you can never get it clean. And if you have a pet, it's it's just something that you can. It just it's a it, it never ends. The cleaning never ends with it. Where Hairs the, stick to it. Right. Yeah. Right. You you if you've got one of those little robot cleaners like a Roomba or something like that, they they don't. They say that it cleans the carpet, but it really doesn't. It really doesn't, no. I know from buying a carpet cleaner, we've got some old legacy carpet that was in the house since it was built, that every time, and I use it on a regular basis, it's like a vacuum cleaner, it's so easy to use. Um, but when I do the deep clean on it, which I do every month or so because we've got dogs, there's so much hair that comes up, it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And anybody with dogs, if you think your carpet is clean, buy one of those things. It's a Bissett. Um, give a little shout out to Bissett there. Um, it's it's an amazing product, but it pulls up clumps of hair that it leaves on the carpet. It's like, where did it get that from? You know, and if you've got doggies, you've got hair. Sorry, unless you've got one of these hypoallergenic ones that doesn't right. shed. Right. Um, you, you're going to have that hair problem. So yeah. Anyway, we obviously we love LVP, whether it's in your home or anything else. Um, 
What about colors that you're painting? Go for a neutral and remember the paint. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I like you know keep keep your keep your rental looking modern. Keep it looking clean. Um, you know I, that's that's another thing. D- design it in a way where where it can stay cleaned easily. Yes. Um, and, and there's going to be times you you need you need to remember your color because you may yeah. need to do an emergency touch up for whatever reason. But I I like to keep it warm, inviting. Yeah. You know, Typically, my Sherwin Williams colors are either modern gray or online uh, light French gray. I love all those colors. I love pure white. That's pure my white. I, my my go to trim paint is marshmallow. Um, but <laughs> uh, but but it you know keeps it kind of uniform, and yes. I can do a quick uh, touch up if need be. And um, you're going to have to do that. Or we, we're talking the same about really maintaining maintaining your home too. Oh, sure. Whether it's an STR or not, like these are good things to have. And, you know, we're over 3,500 sales in the area here, all over the mountains. And um, I always ask my sellers to make a list of all the colors, everything they've used, um, where they got it from, you know, where they bought the, I don't know, dishwasher from or wherever it was, as much information as they've got. Keep that information because you never know when you're going to need it. And, oh, my gosh, ceiling paint? What a nightmare. If you don't know the ceiling paint that was used, you're like, oh, ceiling paint's all the same color. No, it isn't. No, it's not. No, it's not. And if you put a different light fixture in or you decide to put pendants over the, again, short-term rental or your home, if you need some work doing on the ceiling, maybe there's a shower that's leaked upstairs or something, and you have to repair that, you've got to do the entire ceiling. Right, right. And if you've got, say, 1,600 square feet or 1,400 square feet, which is kind of normal on each level, that's a lot of money to paint your ceiling. Not only that, they've got a, what a nightmare. They've got to cover everything. They generally spray it. Like that's a heck of an investment. So keep your ceiling color. Exactly. Just say, save or take a picture of it of the uh, of the label, and yes. uh, file that way in a in a folder yes. in, in your uh, in, in, on your computer just to keep up with those colors. Um, you know, three four years later, you may not remember what well, was that Valspar ceiling paint I used, yeah. or was that Sherwin Williams paint yes. I used. Oh. Um, so, and and there will be a difference. You you will be able to tell. Oh, it's awful. And yes. You see that patch on the ceiling? It looks like a stain that's come through. And you stare at it every time. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. I'm mean, nobody else notices except that annoying aunt that comes in <laughs> over the holidays and says, "Hey, what's that stain on your ceiling? You need to get that fixed." You know, it's, it's a normal thing, right? So. Let's talk about the, I think we've talked about the downside a little bit. Um, it's segment five that, that we put together as we were doing our research this week. You know, analyzing the potential downsides. I think we've talked about that quite extensively in terms of the market volatility. So I know in the last year that a lot of those rental amounts have dropped. Do you have any idea why that would be is it because the market's become saturated because everybody wants an airbnb well there's a couple different things coming into that you know if you got into this during covid you you were riding the high wave yeah. there, um you know disney was closed cruise ships were closed europe was closed so p- people wanted to go somewhere um the the beach business went booming pretty pretty fast but and, but the short-term rental business in general uh, had an incredible incredible growth spurt there um, you know, people didn't want to be in hotels. They didn't want to be in that 400 square foot house or square foot room. Yes. Um, and a right lot of on... them were closed down. Yes. A lot and they of were them having were. all these COVID things and they were putting up new sanitation devices and exactly. having the cleaners and the, and the, um, you know, the people in the hotel wearing masks and you didn't know whether it was going to be open or not. And then you were scared of going down in the elevator and they were saying the elevator should only have one person. Ooh. Yeah, why wouldn't you stay in an Airbnb? Right. No wonder they they went crazy during that that. Yeah, yeah they they were popular. It, it was it was it was the boom of the industry, and a lot of people discovered Airbnbs and short term rentals at that point. So, um, you know, a lot of people got into the business at that point. So, yeah, do I believe there's a little oversaturation? I think there is. I think a lot yeah. of people got into it. Uh, and probably a lot of people who just didn't know what they were getting into. It seemed like a good idea. It was the hot thing to do at that time. And then, you know, about a year or two down the road, they realized just how much work this is. Yes. Um, and, and so, the, you know, maybe they're uh, they're rethinking this now. Maybe they're thinking, well, I've got this property or I invest in this property, but, you know, it's it's a lot of work to keep this up. I'm, I'm not a handy person. Yes. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a marketing person. Um and they're looking at converting that now to to a long term rental. Yes, and there may be a people who have a portfolio 
of of short term rentals that maybe want to offload one or two that maybe aren't performing and maybe buy another one. And we've got all kinds of lenders that can help you with that. STRCPO.com. Um, that came about because we have our cash offer program, whereby if you're a short term rental owner, you don't really want to list it, do you? Because how on earth do you coordinate being able to show the home? And then it's kind of weird when you go to a rental, if it's a short term rental or a long term rental, and there's a for sale sign outside. It's the same with a long term rental. Most people who own long term rentals don't want the for sale sign outside. You know, you don't you don't want your renters in there and the for sale signs out. You may not even want your renters to know right, right. that you're selling the property. It does prevent. It does present challenges, yeah. and and. I, and and I agree with you. You know, you don't want that for sale sign out front. It it uh, it's, it it could say a lot of different things. You know, it could say your commitment level to this is yes. not as high as it used to be, or it's not very good and people don't want it. It's, Otherwise, exactly. why would you be selling why it? Why would you, you be know? selling it? Yes. So and, you know, I think in that case, you know, it, it you may have to make the hard decision to to just to just pause your rentals and, yes. and put the for sale sign. Oh, up. interesting. Well, the other way we do it is through the STR CPO program. And that's the the cash offer. So this isn't grandfather's or your grandparents' cash offer. Sorry, grandparents out there. But you remember what cash offers used to be and still are in many instances. They've got a very bad name because, you know, uh, the ugly houses folks. And uh, and there's nothing wrong with that business model. You go in and you scoop up a home for 50 or 60 percent and then you remodel it and you flip it or you hold it and rent it out. You know, that's the general model. There's lots of realtors that have cash offer programs. Um, The biggest one I've ever come across is one at about 84 percent. There's there's a guy that has big billboards that says we buy houses and it's about 84 percent. Ours is a return of about 90 to 120 percent on average. And what we do, the cash GPO team goes in and purchases the home and upfronts the money for the appraisal and the inspection. So you end up with a certified pre-owned home that you don't have to pay for that certification for. The cash CPO team then goes in, uh, paints the walls, puts new countertops on, whatever it needs to be able to be sold at that higher price or... There's lots of people out there that are just getting 90% on a regular listing right now, but it doesn't have to be listed. Um, You get a big cash advance, a 70% cash advance in 12 days. So for somebody that's looking to invest in another one without all the hassle of that, you get the cash advance of 70% in 12 days. And then um, the cash GPO team go in, do whatever it needs, clean it up, get the furniture out if we're getting the furniture out um, it could be just a deep clean quite honestly it maybe needs some painting it maybe needs some sprucing up and you're just done at that point you want the money out to invest in a different short-term rental that maybe you've uh, gotten a little more expertise over time and you know that if you could get your money out of that one you could buy another one maybe the market's flatter and it's harder to sell right now which is happening in most areas around the country it's harder to sell your home right now that's why getting your home certified pre-owned where it's got the inspection the appraisal and offers a home warranty is very very important whether you're selling your regular home or you are selling your str but strcpo.com if you want to have a look at the cash offer 70 percent in 12 days cash uh, closing and then everything is done for you it's resold and on average and they're buying three thousand this year on average, you're getting another 20 to 50%. Two-thirds of sellers get more than with a traditional listing without any showings, without you know dealing with your pets or your kids or, in the short-term rental sense, your visitors. So I think that's a great thing. Any other thoughts? Because can you believe, PJ, we're wrapping up already? Was that the quickest hour you've ever experienced? That was pretty fast, yes. <laughs> I, I just tell people, you know, just, just think through what you're getting into. You certainly don't want to, uh, um, you know... Get yourself in trouble. Get yourself in a bind. You know, yeah. reach out to your lender. Have a good conversation. I have a great guy that I work with, Carl Lemaster, who's been fantastic with me, and and build that relationship just to make sure you're fully aware of of, of everything you're getting into. And Let's then, get his name on str.com. Absolutely. Thank you, so str strcpo.com. Strcpo.com. If you're a provider for STRs, get your name in there. Thank you so much, PJ. That was amazing. It's going to be podcast as well, so we can share it with anybody interested in STRs, and we'll see you on the radio next week. Happy New Year. Year's Real Estate Show with Rowena Patton. Visit Rowena and post your questions at RadioAsheville.com. 
or call her at 828-210-1648. Stand by for the latest from around the world and right here at home. From the Apple Tree Automotive Superstore Studios, this is WWNC Asheville and iHeartRadio Station.